And now for a session presented by Red Sea Global. Please welcome the Group Chief Development Officer at Red Sea Global, Nicholas King, in conversation with SCIF President Carolyn Kremens. Hope you had a good, a good show so far. A lot of content, right? Yeah, fantastic. So Nick, thank you so much for joining me. Um, this morning, we heard from Wouter Geertz, who is SCIF's head of research, and he talked about the explosion of travel in this region, and in particular, um, the, the Saudi Vision 2030. Right now, travel is about 2% of the GDP, which is mostly dedicated to religious tourism, but the goal is for it to be closer to 10%. Um, there's so much buildings, a lot of projects, a lot of development, um, but one of them that we're going to talk about and focus on today is Red Sea Global. So, um, Nick, tell us a little bit more about what you're doing there and what should we know? Sure. Thanks for having me here, Carolyn. We're playing our part in that movement uh, to diversify the economy and to grow that tourism industry. Our two projects that are um, first and foremost at the moment, although we have many up and down the coast, but the, those two are the Red Sea Project and Amala. The Red Sea Project is an island-oriented development, although we have a lot of land with desert and mountains, about 28,000 square kilometers in all, so a big property. Um, but we have 90 islands, and so we're developing a first phase there that is, uh, is going to be, we'll have the first three hotels open next year. We'll have the next 13 open the year after that. And that first phase has about 3,000 keys plus residential amenities, etc. And ultimately, we'll have about 8,000 keys plus residential. All of the supporting infrastructure that makes, that, that puts that in place is also underway, airport, etc. To the north is Amala. It's more of a coastal development. There's very dramatic mountains coming down to the sea. We have numerous bays and islands, but larger, fewer islands. So more of a coastal-based development. The first phase is underway now, eight hotels. Ultimately, we'll have about 3,000 keys, so smaller than Red Sea Project. Both are luxury projects, which is, it was great to hear the Alliance Bernstein presentation talking about the, the lag in luxury hotel development, particularly in the Middle East, and we're playing our part in delivering that. Our message is, and our, our, our mantra is people and planet. So we are, we are we're very progressive on that front. So when you, let's go into that a little bit further. And by the way, I don't, like, I don't know if you get the scope of the size of this project. I mean, it's like, it's like a small country, right? It's like the size of Belgium, right? <laughs> I, I heard another project speaking the other day about being close to the size of Belgium, so we probably have to find another oh, country. Oh, okay, but, we'll find another country. But, but okay. yes, it, it's a large property. <laughs> Okay, we'll find another one, um, or if you have any ideas. Let's... But um, you, you talk about um, a people and planet, and I think that that is probably a very, is very unique to what your sort of mantra is um, in terms of what that looks like. So sustainability, um, that's, that's, I think, front and center for you. Can you talk to us a little bit more about what that looks like for Red Sea Global? Yeah, we, we took a position from the beginning that we wanted to set a new standard um, and really lead the way for tourism and development. We have the fortunate position of controlling such a large amount of land and water that we have the ability to do the right thing. There's also the political will to do the right thing in Saudi Arabia. So we have um, uh, both resorts are entirely off-grid. So we're 100% 100, 100 powered by renewable energy. We're by far the largest project uh, in hospitality to be completely off-grid. So we have even our backup power is battery storage. We're building the world's largest battery storage facility today. So that's, that was a, a position we took early on. And we decided that sustainability was not enough. That instead, we needed to push for a regenerative approach to these projects as well as everything we do in the future, which means that we take our, our responsibility as custodian of these properties very seriously, and we want to leave them better than we found them, found them in, in the sense that we've, we're, we're developing them. So we have extensive uh, science-based approach to regenerating both the water, coral, mangroves, seagrass fields, 
as well as the land, letting the land come back through controlling grazing and controlling water runoff and so forth. So we're actively researching and executing projects to improve the landscapes that we, uh, that we are custodians of. Yeah, that's, that's pretty great. I mean, you're really creating a model for, I think, the, the rest of us to figure out how We to, hope so. Yeah. We have to, show, to, to, show, to lead the way and to show that if you take a position, it's doable. Right, right. Um, and what about the traveler? I mean, again, also when Wouda was speaking this morning, he was talking about that, you know, travelers are definitely, and especially after um, post-COVID or during COVID, we saw the world changing right before our eyes um, with, um, you know, less overcrowding and, and whatnot. I mean, what about, um, like, will they choose the destination because of it? You know, like, like we know it's on their mind, but are they going to actually put their money where their mouth is? Will they... Will they choose it to go there because you are making this dedication? Our research shows that, that um, there's a far greater awareness uh, of these elements today than there has been in the past. I think there'll be lots of reasons that people will choose to come to, to our um, developments. That's one factor. And we're not just, this isn't a passive thing for us. We are making, we're integrating this into everything we do. So when you come to our developments, you'll be able to go to marine research facilities, you'll be able to interact with the, the scientists at work, you'll be able to participate, if you like, in, in going from a coral nursery and then bringing it out on a dive trip with you. Um, so it's integrated into the entire experience. Uh, I, uh, our, our research tells us and all the interactions we have that people want to participate in those things. They want. It, it gives them additional things to experience uh, rather than sitting on the beach. And, and um, so, yeah, we think, we, we think right. they will. Well, will they have to um, pay more for it? Like do, do, like, do those experiences cost more? Like, obviously, you're putting the money into it, you know, to create it. But when it gets to the traveler, will, will it impact their No, we don't quality? convert that into, in, in, we don't burden the guest with, with those expenses. Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. That's, right. that's part and parcel of what we're delivering. Right. Right, right, right. That makes sense. So this is a pretty progressive, bold vision, um, which I know you <laughs> agree with. Um, but, and you have a lot of partners who are already signed up um, to, be, to be part of Red Sea Global. Um, what about the other partners that you're thinking about, not only the travel partners, but potentially from other sectors? Um, how do you communicate this whole notion of regenerative travel and the impact of it? Um, yeah. Yeah, we, of course, our hotel management agreements um, are extensive, and so those, those partnerships are, are extremely important to us. But it goes beyond that. Everything that we're doing, whether it's um, mobility, um, security, et cetera, et cetera, it covers the, an, an enormous range of activities. In transportation and mobility, for example, we're building our own um, seaplane subsidiary, and so we aim there to be to have hydrogen power, ultimately electric powered uh, aircraft. All of our every vehicle on site will be powered by renewable energy. So those partnerships are important. But what we're finding is that the things that we've taken to we've chosen to take a stand on are very much uh, in sync with the way corporate entities are, are, are moving forward. So even if you look at the, the retail opportunities we have on site on our, in our developments, um, luxury retailers today have very high ESG aspirations. We're two steps ahead of them. So it's, very, it's, it's proving very, um, we're very much in step with, the, with what the aspirations are of these groups. So luxury retailers, for, for as, as an example, are very keen to partner with us and locate with us because of what we represent and how we're doing things. Instead of going to a conventional setting for, for a luxury retailer, for example, where landlords might find it a struggle to deliver on those ESG objectives, we're already there. So, so uh, we're finding yeah. that's very much. It's uh, probably like they have to retrofit where you're, yeah, you have exactly. your opportunities to build right. the foundation from the yeah. ground up. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, um, oh, Recently, you changed your name from a Red Sea Development Company to Red Sea Global. Um, so I think the probably obvious question to ask is, um, do you see this concept um, living 
um, beyond S Saudi? Do you, is it uh, the manifestations of this concept of Red Sea Global that can live elsewhere? Well, we, re we rebranded from the Red Sea Development Company because we were created to develop a single project, the Red Sea Project. Um, as we acquired Amala, uh, this, it, it seemed to us that there was a benefit in having a, a, a more of a, an overarching brand where then we could have project subsidiaries beneath it. But people are very much focused on that global uh, element of our name. Right, we, as like, I mentioned, mm -hmm. we have multiple right. projects along the coast. Um, the, 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 so we have 14 projects now. Most of them are hospitality driven, but they do also stray into primary market projects. Uh, <clears throat> but we are already starting to look at, at international opportunities and that's very exciting for us. We recently uh, um, decided to pursue a, a deal in Europe and we're, we're going to look further afield as well. So that's exciting for us to actually, yes, see through uh, and, and make that name mean something on, uh, on the global stage. I could see Red Sea spas all over the world, right? <laughs> Will I be going to one in New York? Wellness is a big part of our agenda. So <laughs> yeah. um, yes, uh, at Amala, that's a big part of the platform. And, and I could see us bringing wellness and our regenerative tourism agenda to, to projects where we execute them. Well, Nick, this has really been a, a really great conversation. It's, um, it's wonderful to see how you're pioneering uh, because I really can't think of another place right now in the world um, where this is happening. And so congratulations to you. Thank and if you. anyone wants any more information, go. Feel free to have a conversation with That's me. Right. Absolutely, I'd be happy to tell you more. Great, thank you so much Thank for joining you. us.